there is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution without change, without passion, and without logic. It's a nice shark here. It lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. Almost bit my ankle. Okay, here's a risky game when you got fish with big teeth in the boat. Here we go out here in the San Francisco Bay this morning. Whacking a little uh little sharks, here's a little smoothie. Oh, these guys are real strong, even the little skinny ones can really torque all over. So if you don't have a good grip and holding your hook steady, you can have a real bad day. Got them right there using a little sturgeon leader, homemade sturgeon leader with uh, seven knot cutting point hooks. There we go, first one of the morning. Nice little smooth hound, see those green eyes there? The difference between a smooth hound and a dogfish, see his top fin here where my thumb's pointing. You'll see a horn right there. If it's a dogfish, the horn lays right up against that dorsal fin. And the smooth hound's got green eyes. Hold on, coming up. It's a big ray, he's swinging, he's swinging. We're okay. We're okay, I'm gaining some ground on him now. Always, when you're fighting these big fish, you do not want the load to come off your rod whatsoever during the fight. Oh, that's a, that's a nice one here. Big ray. There we go. You gotta love the way these mud marlins fight, I tell you. <laughs> There we go. Ray's got tough mouths on them. It's a nice uh, release tool, normally for circle hooks, but if you get enough angle on it, you can pull a J hook out at the same time. I don't like putting my hands too close to Ray's. I got stabbed all the way through my left hand when I was a youngster, and I learned my lesson. Dave, watch my rod for me, kid. Another ray. I heard a little drag, looked over. The rod doubled though. <laughs> oh, it's a skate. Nice skate. Come have a look at this. Look at that skate. There's a rare rarity. Not a thorn back, that's a skate. Look at that. 16 pound, one ounce skate right there. That's a nice one. He swallowed it, so. Yeah. Them loose. Uh oh. What in the heck happened there? Had about a two and a half foot leader, and I felt this one shark tagging at it, and I went to lift up on it, and I think a seven gill came across and tried to bite it and bit right through my main line. This is a 40 pound mono. I could see the bite mark right out of it. So, not didn't pull loose. He actually bit right through that thing, trying to steal the bait away from another one. So I'm gonna tie back on another sturgeon leader with about a two foot leader here and uh, hopefully that awkward scenario doesn't happen again. I got two uh, seven knot J hooks like that, octopus J hooks. An octopus just means the eye where the cable's going through leans back. And I'm using a glass bead on there and that's more common for sturgeon with the glass bead. When they start fondling it, it starts ticking, kind of like a shrimp. 
So some people believe in theory that that ticking of the hooks on there kind of simulates a shrimp, uh, you know, and they're much more apt to take it at that point. It might make a minuscule difference, but small differences generally catch you big fish. So we're gonna tie this back on and uh, all I'm gonna do is send a leader, I mean a, a slider back up my line here. But I wanna do it to where the shorter end to the snap swivel goes up and that way if the weight leans against it's leaning against plastic or it's leaning against metal and not my line so I'm gonna just send that back up there and then I'm gonna use a bead and what the beads for is oftentimes when you tie on right here when the bead comes down that'll keep mud from often getting in you can put a bead on top and a bead on bottom and that'll prevent a lot of mud from getting inside your slider to help it slide freely to where you can sense that little light pickup. But fishing for sharks like this, they're really aggressive. So even if you didn't put the bead on there, you would know when you had one. And I'm just using a Palomar knot to tie it on with. And uh, when you're using big, heavy monofilament like this, this is 40 pound right here. When you're using something this heavy, a lot of the time you have to assist your knots. You can't just cinch it down like with the smaller stuff and I'll show you. What I mean by assist my Palomar right here, I'm gonna put my finger in the loop so it doesn't cinch down, and I'm gonna drag my whole leader back through, like so, and bring it up. But I'm gonna keep my finger in here the whole time because if this knot starts to cinch itself down beforehand, I'm gonna be stuck. And we got another fish over here. There he goes, fish on, check her out. Oh, it popped up, no, he's there. So now I got my Palomar cinched down right to my bead, my slider. So you can see if the weight hits, it's not going to be hitting line. It'll be hitting all terminal tackle right here, which will prevent it from putting nicks and frays in there if you have a little bit of burr or something on your weight. And right down to my hooks, I'm just going to cut a whole squid in half and use half a squid at a time. And I'll show you exactly how I'm rigging the squid too. So I take the whole squid and just go right in half right here. and. What I'm doing, a lot of people will use thread and stuff, but on sharks, they have teeth. It doesn't matter if you use magic thread or nylon thread or anything, they're gonna bite through it. So what you wanna do is you wanna come in about, you know, about a half an inch on your squid and you wanna go straight through. And instead of yanking your squid up and putting it back on the hook again, you wanna slide it up the shank. You don't wanna tear a big hole and then you wanna line it up and you wanna come straight back through again without tearing a hole and slide it down. And why you don't want to tear a hole is if they peck at it, if there's a big hole, the, the odds of your squid just coming off around the hook point in that barb is much more likely. So by sliding it up the shank and coming straight through, you're keeping a very small hole in your bait. And what that's going to do is when they're pecking at it, it's going to give you a higher odd of them getting it in their mouth and you're getting the, the opportunity to set the hook on them. Therefore, if they peck at it and it slips off over the hook, well, they don't have hook and they got your bait, so what's the point, right? So let's get baited up and get back out. Now a trick with your pyramid weight, if you hook it on the bottom, I like these with the double eyes on them. If you hook it on the bottom and you cast it out there and you're in a silty bottom, if you start to drag it, a lot of the time with smaller weight, you can hold down to the bottom by hooking onto the bottom and you'll feel that a lot of resistance to where you can keep that tension up to your rod. But if you hook on the point, you have the opposite Whoa. effect. And I got a fish on over here on the offhand. And he's on there. And he's on there. There we go. It's an offhand circle hook. I have a 12 aught Shaughnessy circle hook on this and a whole squid. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty nice one there. Could be a ray, could be a shark. Decent pump. Let me clear the prop here. Good pumping, good pumping. I'm using this longer surf rod and normally in a boat you use a little shorter rod. Uh, what I'm doing with the longer surf rod to help the camera guys get around is I put it in the rod holder and keep a lot of tension going straight out to where they can walk right under it and the lines are out off to the side because we're fishing dual rod stamps. 
and you have a high risk. If you're fishing rods real close to one another right here, it's a high risk of getting crossed up. But when I can put this line out 100 foot to the side of the boat with a nice size surf rod, you know, it's good. And if I were to come up right to the side of the boat and choke up, oh, uh, look at that. This is about a maybe three and a half, four foot smooth house. It's a nice shark here. We're gonna need the net. Can I get you to net the smooth hound, Dave? Here we go. It's a really nice shark here. Now, the reason, the reason why I just casted this other rod out and put it back out there is in the midst of this commotion, we pulled up all of our lines. And when you're dealing with sharks, they're scavengers. These are all bottom feeding sharks. And we pull up all the lines, well, our tent trail's now out of the water. So the sharks that we've been pulling, in theory, there's no reason for them to come here anymore because the scent's gone. So, you know, we got the shark in the boat. We'll put another line out, keep the scent. I'll take over this shark and I'll have David get another line out so we can maintain that scent trail that, you know, we've probably been pulling sharks from miles away. You know, and if our biggin comes just like this and we don't have a line out there, we're wasting time once again. So let's go ahead and get this fish out. Oh. Oh. Ah. Almost bit my ankle. Okay, he's got my pants, hold on. Crafty bastard. <laughs> Do me a favor, Dave, and keep his head back. I don't want bit, being bit in the ankle there. Here's a risky game when you got fish with big teeth in the boat. There we go, hook's clear. Turn that guy loose. All right, I'm gonna revive him part. Yeah? Oh yeah, he's on. Oh, he's throwing all of a sudden. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a scruff dog ray. Okay. Ate your dinner. Tell you to use your teeth. Yeah. Well, PG&E paid top dollar for my teeth. I lost a few when I was a kid. <laughs> if you're wondering where my hat went, it was a recent wing gust. If you're wondering why my head shaved, well, it's not too bad anymore, but I did it for the uh, St. Baldrick's event for the kids. Oh, this guy's coming in backwards. That's what was going on. Come here, baby. That's the downside to a long rod when you're in a boat. There we go. There he goes. Oh, grab your bait. That's all right. I'm gonna put a bigger one on anyhow. <laughs> Drinking a little bit of the bay here to go along with that catch. This is that offhand rod that I'm putting out to the side of the boat. Getting it out there about 75 to 100 feet to where I don't have to worry about it tangling with anything. And then I also did that, uh, you know, the upside down pyramid weight on there too to where I have a little bit more resistance. You can use those uh, anchor style baits with the wire, the spider weights. A lot of the time when you're dealing with a lot of current and a lot of wind um, for your off hands to make sure you're in position because you're waiting for them to load up anyways. So that's also a good system if, you're, if your pyramid weight's not staying down. It looks like we got a strong current today, but realistically, the tide kind of sucks. Uh, you know, we only have a couple foot fluctuation in tide on the bay, which is not really good at all. And generally when you have a slow tide, you want to fish deeper water. The fish tend to draw in towards deeper water. So we're right here in the main shipping channel, right outside of San Fran here. And uh, 
when you have the opposite of course you're gonna fish shallow water up on top of the ledges of the uh, shipping channel and you should have a little bit more luck that way my boy bit me in my dungarees man look at that all tore up and cut through there tell me if he wouldn't have hit me in the ankle I wouldn't have been in some serious pain huh I had a the tip of this finger almost taken off by a seven gill when I was in my early 20s that guy almost uh, left his mark on my shin there I see a little bit of blood on my sock but I don't think I'm bleeding it must have been his blood because I don't see any cuts in my leg I got lucky <laughs> That, that drag right there set to about 25, 30 pounds. Holy, I'm gonna have to tighten up before he strips me. It turns out Ray Ray jumped into the current and decided to smoke me for fun. That's why we call him Mud Marlin, folks. This little Ray right here is probably not all of 10, maybe 12 pounds, maybe smoking this full-size Sargus like this on this slammer ride, taking it for a ride. We call the little guys Ray Ray. That right there, that's Ray Ray. Got him that time. quite a bit look at that pumping a little bit more than a ray does see that upside down shark move down pretty decent one <laughs> Another nice smoothie there. Yeah, buddy. Better grab the net just in case. see from the holes they bit in Nick's pant leg you definitely don't want to let these guys grab your wrist hello <laughs> go ahead and release <laughs> just shot water out his gills now let's put him back in the water
Well, that's it for another fun day out here shark fishing on the San Francisco Bay. You know, I really wanted to get out towards around Treasure Island to target those bigger leopard sharks and drop back to a couple of my favorite hot spots, but it's hard to tell in this video, but realistically, we had 35, 40 mile an hour wind, and when I went back out to my hotter spots and dropped anchor, the wind was pulling the bow of the boat down so much we were taking on water, so we had to put all the cameras away and just tried to survive to get out of there. And uh, you know, you don't really see it, but I took water up to uh, almost to my waist a couple of times. But you know, overall, we still had a really fun day. And um, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Best of fishing.